In this video, we will be installing the management station. I have decided to go for R81.20. If you want to have a bit more advanced lab, of course, you can start with R81.10 and then do an upgrade. So it's located here and it is supposed to be a dedicated management network for Checkpoint only. I have already installed a Windows 10 machine that we will be using as a jump gate so we can SSH to the platform, we can use smart console and we can also access the web interface. In a real production environment, I will not have a jump gate within the management network because I want the management network to be as clean as possible. So this should be more or less dedicated for checkpoint products only. And when I say checkpoint products only, I mean the management station, the log server and uh, the smart event. Of course, you can have some sort of like um, uh, repo for additional storage space. If you want to offload like logs after they have been a certain amount of time on your log server to have it to be able to store it easier then you can have that within that network as well but try to keep it as clean as possible and that's also like the recommended design from checkpoint as well when you decide on how you want to build this lab you need to check the hardware compatibility list so you're able to actually run it on supported hardware it's not sure that it will even be able to install if you don't run it on supported hardware so Either you can do on physical appliances or you can use open servers, but we will be using virtual machines. So you will need to check within here, a security management server and security, a multi-domain security management server. We are doing a standard security management server for an easy platform. So here we can see that all the versions is supported on like a VMware vSphere, you have some possibility to run Nutanix or Hyper-V, KVM, etc. We are not running it in, in real VMware vSphere, we are running it in VMware Workstation. So for a real production, it's not supported within VMware Workstation. I, I don't see a reason why you would run it in, in production there. But for labs, it works, it works okay. There are some, there can be some caveats, especially when it comes to like network interfaces and you can get additional delay and sometimes it makes some strange things that you need to change like VM nets, etc. So running it on unsupported platforms may cause issues. Uh, so that's why you can have additional issues if you run it in DNS3 or uh, EVNG but in most cases it works it works okay and it works for a lab so within this lab i will be using vm workstation and i think that for me that's the easiest thing to do virtualization environment yes you can do different things like evng or gns3 or doing it in a real virtual environment such as vmware nutanix azure whatever you fancy but for me, it just makes it easier to do it within VMware Workstation because then I can do easy screen record and I have everything on one, one place. So this Windows 10 machine that I have created, it's already installed. It has the smart console already installed as well. And I actually have dual interfaces on it. And I only have dual interfaces as of now for more or less temporary. So I have an easy way to reach internet so more or less i bypass the complete environment by having the vmware um, the vm connected to vm8 that is the external interface so if we check our drawing here this vm uh, the windows 10 machine it has to, to this network but it also have directly to this internet bubble that is netting the traffic out from my host one additional setting I have on this machine as well is to share folders. So you actually don't need internet access for this VM because I have enabled shared folders so it will take from the, the host machine. So I can download images etc from the host machine and then have it show up within this VM 
even without it having internet. So you don't need to have dual interfaces and it's something that I will disab disable later on in the lab, but it's for demonstration purposes and I wanted to have the latest like Windows update and Google Chrome update without doing anything fancy. So that's the reason. When you have decided what version you want to go for, in our case R81.20, that is the latest recommended release as of December 2023. Then you need to check some documentation. So what is important to, to download from this one is first of all like, okay, we have some admin guides, that means that we have some installation upgrade guides, okay? So we check that one. And if we check the documentation for installation and upgrade, it's quite hard to actually find like the requirements for like a VMware workstation or an open server. So you have like installing security management server. Okay, installing. Okay, here's uh, here's how to do it. And if you have it on open servers, okay, let's open that one. It doesn't really say like, okay, you need this amount of memory or disk or whatever when it comes to like a VMware machine. And that is actually located under the release notes. So here we have the requirements and this is R81.20 Titan. So we have requirements, smart console requirements, Gaia portal requirements. And there are also like open server hardware requirements. So it's, it's more or less uh, there that I check for like, okay, how big does my VM actually need to be? So in this case, we have a security management server. So we need this type of CPU, a quite old one, and two cores and eight gigs of RAM. That's the minimum uh, requirements. Um, I would, I would not run a management server on two CPUs and eight gigs of, of RAM. Um, even for the lab, I will make it twice as much, uh, like 16 gigs of RAM. Maybe it's possible to run it on two CPUs, but I, I will still run it on four because it's, it's just easier to have additional performance. So if you have the possibility, take it when it comes to disk space, you see here that minimum free disk space is 110 gigs and recommended it is one terabyte. So I will go for one terabyte uh, when it comes to real production. And then I will add additional log storage to the log to either the management station, if you don't have a dedicated log server or to the uh, dedicated log server after. And the reason for this is because how big the partition is is made because checkpoint will will steal a lot of disk for like snapshots and internal stuff that you cannot that you cannot use without reallocating disk uh, so for this lab i will use 300 gigs just because i want to have the possibility to do upgrades installing hfas in an easier way so yes maybe it's possible on 110 gigs but Disk is cheap, so I will I will use more. Uh, my recommendation is, of course, to use SSD or M MVMV disks because yeah, it's faster. When it comes to memory, the maximum allocate the, the maximum amount that you can have is five hundred twelve gigs. In my real production environments, we normally try to have sixty four gigs, and that's for a multi domain system. So the more, the better. And when it comes to uh, my real production environments uh, for, for MDS or multi-domain, uh, we try to use eight or, or 12. So this is okay. And we, as I said, we try to use 64 gigs here. But when, it's, when it comes to lab, this, this is okay to run the minimum ones, but my recommendation is still to go higher. When it comes to like downloading uh, the software itself, it's possible to find it here, um, <laughs> here, uh, like clean install, and then you can 
you can take this one. My recommendation when it comes to downloading software is still to do the, the upgrade wizard. So in this case, it will be new and we will have a management station. We are running it in, in VMware and uh, let's say it's six operating system Gaia and we want to install directly on R81.20. So then we will have the checkpoint R81.20 Gaia fresh install. So I will try to click this one and let's see if we can actually download it. So I will press download and it will download and it actually download without me signing in. So I could download this um, this uh, ISO without signing in. However, I was not able to download the smart console without signing in. So create an account on Checkpoint website so you can download the, the software. If you install the software, it comes with a, a demo license. I think it's valid for 14 days. So you can lab this without having real licenses. So that's great. After the installation is done, it's still recommended and I would say mandatory to install the, the latest recommended Jumbo hotfix that is for that specific release. So we can log in to CPUs and download it from the GUI later on, or you can download it in advance and then upload it to the management station. And here it's depending on if you have internet or not because your management station will not have internet because we haven't installed the gateways themselves. So that's why we need to download it offline and then upload it to the management station offline to be able to install it. So we can already download it here. So this is R81.20 um, and we will go to the recommended and we do, do download. And here we will see security gateway and security management server, CPUs offline. So download this one. And do we need to be logged in for this one or not? So you actually don't need to be signed in to download this one either. So it has just started. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we will be installing the management station based on this information.